Today, uh, we shall be doing some uh, problems on the heat transfer uh, about which we learnt earlier. Uh, here, we shall be looking into the various types of problems on conductive heat transfer, convective heat transfer and radiative heat transfer. So, first let us take a problem on the conductive heat transfer. Here we have the problem, the problem statement is that we consider a 0.8 meter high and 1.5 meter wide glass window made of 4 millimeter thick layer of glass and the conductivity of glass is given as 0.78 watt per meter per degree centigrade. We have to determine the steady rate of heat conduction if one side of the window is at 30 degree centigrade and the other side is at about 10 degree centigrade. These are very usual problems we also encounter in our day to day life. For example, in the summer we may have very high temperature outside and the room and inside we may have very low temperature which we can maintain by some air conditioner or some cooler. So, this is a very common problem and here we want to find out that how much heat will be passing through the glass window. So, it here we have shown by the figure that here we this is represents the glass window and uh, the this is the area through which the heat transfer is occurring. So, suppose on the left hand side we have the high temperature of 30 degree centigrade and on the right hand side we have the surface which is at 10 degree centigrade and the thermal conductivity is given as 0.78 watt per meter uh, degree centigrade and we have to find out the value of the Q and the thickness of the uh, glass window is given as 4 millimeter. So, because uh, this area of heat transfer that we have to first figure out that thickness here we are the these are the things which are given and the temperature difference is 30 minus 10 is equal to 20 degree centigrade. And we have to find out the conductive rate of heat transfer and for this we shall be using the Fourier's law of heat conduction which is given like this. Here we have the formula. Now, here we are just plugging the values of uh, K that is 0.78 watt per meter per degree centigrade. Then we have the area that is area is 0.8 into 1.5 that is 1.2 meter square and then we have the temperature difference that is 20 degree centigrade and the thickness of the material is uh, 4 mm that is 4 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter. So, we have put all the units in the SI unit so that if we we will cancel out the units, we will end up with the watt. So, we have this Q as 4680 watt or 4.68 kilowatt. So, this is the kind of heat that will be coming through the glass window with, with a uh, thickness of 4 mm. So, that is how so you can see that 4.68 kilowatt you can approximately see that what kind of wattage we are using at our home. We are using say 20 watt bulb, 60 watt bulb, but in that respect this you can see this kind of heat transfer which is occurring through the window is quite high. <coughs> so, that is why we sometimes we put some kind of curtains over the glass window to prevent the heat to move from the outside to inside uh, for our uh, during uh, the summer. Here we have a problem on the convective heat transfer. So, the problem says that we have a natural gas at 20 degree centigrade and it is flowing through a circular pipe of diameter 0.5 meter at a velocity of 2 meter per second. The pipe wall is maintained at a temperature of 45 degree centigrade. So, we have to figure out what is the convective rate of heat transfer per unit length of the pipe between the gas and gas and the pipe. So, because the pipe is at a higher temperature than the gas, so what will happen during the natural gas flow, the natural gas will tend to heat up. So, for this we use the Newton's law of heating. Uh, first, we put whatever is given to us that is the velocity of the gas, the diameter of the pipeline and the temperature difference as 25 degree centigrade and with this we will be using the 
Newton's law of cooling or heating to find it out that we are finding that this is the h a delta t and here the question comes how to find out the value of the h. Now, this is first thing is you have to keep in mind that this is a closed um, tube circular tube. So, we have to figure out various types of correlations which pertain to the circular tubes and then we have to figure out what kind what is because it is a case of forced convection. So, we have to find out the various types of correlations which are proposed in the literature on the forced convection and some of which I showed you in my previous lecture and for to choose the appropriate correlation in the forced convection mode we have to find out the value of the Reynolds number. So, here we have the Reynolds number as uh, 6 lakhs 36 thousand 36 no, sorry, sorry, 63 thousand 636. So, this very very high Reynolds number and which is much more than 2000 that is a critical Reynolds number in a uh, circular tube for giving us the uh, uh, turbulent flow. So, in the turbulent regime we use this particular equation that is also called Ditas Bolter equation and in this because this is a case of heating up of the natural gas. So, we are using the power of the Prandtl number as 0.4. So, we are using this particular equation uh, and in this we shall be plugging in the values of the Reynolds number and the Prandtl number is given by this uh, equation mu C p by k and here we plugging the value of the various properties and we get the Prandtl number as about 0.72. We put the 0.72 in this equation and this 63636 in this equation and then we get the value of the Russell's number as 141. And the Russell's number is the h k by some characteristic length. In this case, the characteristic length has been taken to be the diameter of the tube. So, with the Russell's number, with the thermal conductivity of the fluid and the diameter of the tube, we can find the value of the heat transfer coefficient. And once we know the value of the heat transfer coefficient, we can again go back to this particular equation. Here, this case we find the area through which the heat transfer is taking place is pi d into L. So, this pi d L we put and then we put A by L that is the pi d and this pi d value is 1.6 meter. So, we with this we what we do? We put this value in this equation and we get the value of the heat transfer by convection per unit length of the pipe is 400 watt per meter. That means, for, for a uh, pipe length of 1 meter 400 watt of the heat will be coming from a wall at 45 degree centigrade to a natural gas at about 20 degree centigrade. Now, please understand that this is there are many assumptions in solving this problem because as natural gas moves inside it gets heated up. So, naturally the driving force keeps coming down as the gas moves through the pipeline. So, the heat flux will also start reducing as the gas is uh, going ahead. So, in this particular problem we have just taken you can say that we have taken a small section over which we are assuming that the natural gas temperature is remaining constant at about 20 degree centigrade. However, in a real uh, situation this temperature will keep on increasing and that is how it will keep on reducing the convective heat flux during the journey of the natural gas to the pipeline. Lastly, we come to a problem on radiation heat transfer. Here we have two copper circular plates of diameter 50 centimeter and 40 centimeter respectively. Now, please note the geometry of the surface is very important. Here we are talking about the circular plates and we shall see how this matters in the evaluation of the radiative heat transfer. And these two circular plates are separated coaxially that is they have the same axis. They are standing one uh, over the other with the same axis. So, the coaxially they are separated by a distance of about 10 centimeter. If the temperature of the first plate is 300 K and another is 150 K, the, the temperature difference is about 150 K. Now, please understand 300 K is about 
27 degree centigrade whereas, 150 K is much below the 0 degree centigrade. So, it is negative temperature negative in centigrade scale. So, there is such a large temperature difference they are existing. So, there will be some kind of a relative heat transfer between the surfaces. Here we are neglecting any kind of uh, convective heat transfer then by neglecting the presence of any medium that is we are not uh, uh, considering the presence of any gas between the two circular plates. So, here we have the solution that we are given all these values the T 1 is given 300 K, T 2 as 150 K, then radius of first plate R 1 that is 25 centimeter, radius of second plate R 2 it will be R 2 not R 1 that is 20 centimeter and the distance of separation is 10 centimeter. And we have to find out the radiative heat transfer rate. So, we are using this equation and in this equation first we figure out the value of the emissivity and for because it is copper. So, we find the emissivity of copper as 0.87. Next we find out the area over which this is taking place this is pi uh, r 1 square because it is from the surface 1 we are talking about. So, it is pi r 1 square it will be. So, it is uh, we are putting the value of r 1 as 25 centimeter and we are getting this particular as 0.1963 meter square after the unit conversion. And then we are finding the value of L by R 1 and R 2 by L and these things are coming because the figures for the uh, uh, this uh, the shape factor is given in terms of the L by R 1 and as R 2 by L as the parameter. So, what we do we find the L by R 1.4 which we locate here on this axis 0.4 and we move straight up and then what wherever the R 2 by L is 2 that is at this position. So, we move ahead move straight away then we go to this value of R 2 by L as 2 and wherever it intersects then we read out the value of the shape factor from the y axis. So, this value we read out it is about 0.5 and now with this values or various values we obtain what we do. Now, we plug in these values in this particular formula to get the radiative heat flux value. Please mind it that in this case in radiative heat transfer the uh, uh, the driving force is not simply temperature difference, but it is the fourth power the temperature raised to fourth power is the temp which is giving the driving force and with this we obtain the radiative heat flux as 30 about 37 watt. So, the about 37 watt um, uh, heat um, uh, transfer is happening due to radiation between two plates at 300 K and 150 K, but please mind it that depending on the type of material we use the emissivity will keep on changing and also the way the uh, two plates are oriented the shape of the plates will dictate the value of the uh, shape factor and also the dimension of the plate will dictate the area of the uh, of the particular uh, geometry. So, all these things will uh, matter in deciding the uh, radiative heat transfer. Here we try to see that how much heat transfer is taking from plate 1 to plate 2 in the other way round if I we can also find out what is happening from plate 2 to plate 1 in that case we can simply replace a 1 by a 2 and if we put other things same we will find we get the whatever the relative heat transfer taking place from a 2 to a 1. So, depending on what, what we put with whether a 1 or a 2 depending on that and also the shape factor will also change because the r 1 r 2 will also be defined interchangeably for the two plates. So, depending on whether it is coming from a bigger plate to smaller plate or a smaller to bigger plate the amount of heat transfer will be different and as we know that if it is from smaller to bigger we can say that almost all the radiative heat radiative waves will be going to the bigger plate, but when it goes from bigger to the smaller 
some of these waves are lost and which we, which we do not reach the smaller plate. So, because of this we find that the radiative heat transfer will be changing whether it is uh, between the bigger one and the smaller one or small from the smaller one to the bigger one or the bigger one to the smaller one for the same system. So, here we have found out the case where the heat transfer is taking place from a bigger geometry to a smaller geometry. And these are the some of the references you can see for more on this kind of uh, problems. Thank you.